Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Andy Simondele. Uh, I'm your guy. We've been together for the last couple of years. And in the last three to four months, I haven't been really back to um, discuss or introduce new topics as was the customs in the last, in the earlier part of this year in the, pre, in the prior years. Um, and today I'm back and I'm back um, in the same context as you can see my background, Empire Building Network, which is um, the platform that we utilize to expand financial knowledge. And for some of you that have been following me for a while or for new people coming on this space, um, Empire Building Network is a platform where we share information about money. And we have a particular approach in discussing all issues relating to money, particularly to towards our audience, um, you know, um, immigrant communities in the United States, in Canada, and elsewhere. But this information is not just unique uh, for immigrants, even the local people can take advantage of that. In the last couple of years, we've discussed a lot around um, the blockchain technology and the derivative of the blockchain technology, which, which is the introduction of cryptocurrency, because we've seen such an expansion of cryptocurrency and, and different platforms of investment that people have taken advantage of in the last few years. And that was the, our main focus. So, however, um, I wanted to come back and sort of expand that knowledge. Why is it important for us to expand that knowledge? Because um, you know, there are opportunities within the blockchain technology. There is also opportunity beyond the blockchain technology, outside of the blockchain technology, and uh, towards you know within the financial industry, and in particular within the insurance industry. So today, I wanted to come back to you and sort of introduce a different aspect, which is going to be the recurring theme and framework uh, of discussion in the weeks and days to come, in days and weeks to come, uh, where we're going to focus on what's available within that platform. How can we not only create wealth, but also protect wealth using conventional tools that are available? And quite frankly, these tools are pretty simple and easy within the insurance industry. And to do that, um, we're going to explore a number of opportunities, but before we get to that point, I wanted to have the opportunity to reintroduce myself so you know that you deal who you're dealing with. Like I said earlier on, my name is Andy, and uh, my last name is in Simon Dele. Um, I'm passionate about finance. I have an educational education in economics and management. I uh, graduated uh, from the University of Kinshasa for my undergrad. I did University of South Africa for my postgrad. I have an MBA um, uh, from the University of the People um, in Pasadena, California. And, um, and more recently, I became an insurance um, licensed insurance broker. And I'm going to share that in a moment. Uh, but before I do anything, let me share my screen and I'm going to present and I'm going to present to you my uh, licensure with the state of North Carolina. So as you can see, I am a licensed insurance producer from the state of North Carolina in the United States. My national producer number is 20823756. An insurance producer is someone, an individual or an entity that is allowed to discuss or sell insurance product. And in this case, life, accident, and health sickness insurance product. That's my licensure. So I am qualified 
and within my legal, um, you know, uh, aptitude to discuss all things insurance. Now, um, there is a big difference between being an insurance agent and an insurance broker. Anyone who is an insurance agent, we use the same licensure basically. So this licensure allows me to, to choose to be an agent or a broker. The difference between an agent and a broker is that the agent works for a single company. So if you are an agent with company X, you are going to sell, discuss product from company X. In insurance jargon, we call that being a slave to company X because you do not belong to any other company. Whatever is happening with company Z or company Y, it's none of your business. You cannot sell product from company Z or Y because you are affiliated with company X. And that is the insurance agent. The insurance broker, however, is not slave to a single company. He is not slave, meaning he can engage and explore and be affiliated with an unlimited number of companies and therefore have more aptitude to explore different offerings from different companies and do a cost benefit comparison and pr present, present the best product to, uh, you know, would be a potential insured person or people who are seeking to for some coverage. Now, um, the insurance agent therefore works for the single company X, whereas the insurance broker is not slave to company, any company whatsoever, meaning in this case, the insurance broker represents the customer who is the would-be insured person. Your guy, Andy, is an insurance broker. I use a platform called Symmetry, and within Symmetry, I am affiliated to a great number of companies, and therefore, um, better position to explore different products that are available and that we can present to our community, to our people, um, ensuring that people have appropriate coverage. And with that being said, I am going to pause sharing and revert back to our community and start talking about what's important. important for our community. Now, as I discussed earlier on, we are living in a rapidly evolving environment. Uh, it doesn't matter what you live, you could be living right now in the United States, in Latin America, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, Oceania, any part of the world you might be living, we are witnessing a rapidly evolving um, technology, rapid evolving era of information. So we are exposed to a lot of things going on. Famously, uh, one of the genius people of our time, Elon Musk uh, said, uh, it doesn't make sense for anyone in 21st century to go to university anymore because you can literally, I have access to graduate kind of grade material on YouTube for free. You don't have to pay thousand thousand dollars if you have enough discipline to self educate. You can you are able to do that. Um, so therefore, we have a lot of information. So if you want to learn about insurance, you can surely go on YouTube and tap whatever type of insurance and and so on. But there is always a question about what's the quality of the information that you're exposed to. Um, who is providing that information? What's their motives? Um. And, and, and is it accurate in your specific case? And that's where that's where it's important for you to speak to uh, someone who has the credential, someone who is val who is validated to be able to discuss uh, that your particular case in, in, in general. So, uh, and in the case of insurance, it's certainly the case. 
as far as we are concerned, as in Empire Building Network, which is the platform that I utilize to come to you and speak with to you, um, our goal is always to expand knowledge and financial knowledge, um, as it were. So we are geared, hard, laser focus um, on financial knowledge, expanding financial knowledge, and particularly leveraging the available information. And, and that could be insurance, that could be cryptocurrency. As I mentioned earlier, on, we've done that in the past, and we continue to do that in the future. Um, uh, but we want to stay laser focused. Why? Because there's so much opportunity that I believe our people, our community are not taking advantage of. There are a few a handful of people that are taking advantage of that, but the vast majority is even ignorant of what a simple whole life insurance can do for you and for your children, whether you are now here or you're not now. And now that brings me to the next um question uh, or next issue. Right? So especially in my community, people are so um not only skeptical of things, but people are also very indoctrinated in the mind frame, in the way they think about different issues. Uh, a, a very basic example of that is if you raise the issue of life insurance today, a lot of people are very superstitious. They call themselves spiritual. I am a very spiritual person. I believe so wholeheartedly. I am a believer. I'm a Christian. So anything that I approach in my life, whether it's in business or family, I approach it from the Christian perspective. But I also believe, um, even as Christian, if I wanted to take a road trip, I have to get my car checked out. I have ensured that my tires have the um, appropriate amount of pressure. I've made, I have to plan my trip. Um, I'm not just going to drive and drive and drive. I know I have to stop here. Um, recharge my energies, take some drink, take a walk, uh, stay at work and refill my gas tank and so on. So as Christian, I don't just say, oh, I'm going to take a thousand miles trip and I believe I'm going to make it to destination without any preparation whatsoever. That doesn't happen, right? So it still takes the same amount of preparation. However, uh, um, uh, we have the other spectrum, the other tendency, especially in my community, as I said earlier on, that believe that if you raise anything insurance, particularly life insurance, therefore you are calling for the spirit of death, um, you are preaching uh, people are going to die. Now, hello, we're all going to die one day. <laughs> I'm not breaking any news. That's not breaking news, right? That's a fact. All one day, we are, our lives here on earth is going to come to an end and we're going to go. So no one is eternal unless Jesus comes back and um, he ends it for all of us. But if we are visiting this planet um, at this very moment, there will be a day when uh, we'll be called home. And I'm not scared of that day. I want to make the, make the most of my time here on earth whilst I still can. And when I'm no longer here, I want to make sure... I leave behind a legacy. My children are taken care of. My family is well off um, because of the decisions and the steps that I took. Now, when we talk about that, a lot of people don't understand what it means. There is enormous amount of opportunity just in uh, um, the field of insurance in exchange of a small contribution and a lot of the time a very meaningless contribution and we're going to explore that in the days and weeks to come um we're going to break through different products that are available in this space and in the effort to educate our people so they understand so we all understand we become all stronger as a community of what's available when i talk about these things a lot of people say well i have i'm covered i have insurance through my employer uh, a lot of the time, we all have that coverage through employers. Um, we have a lot of people have term insurance through the employers and so on. Um, is it really your plan to stay forever? And not, there's nothing wrong. Let me just start by saying there's nothing wrong with having coverage through employers, right? You can have coverage through employers. That's that's okay. That's fine. Um, but a lot of the time, that's group insurance, though, right? So you have to understand what it means what the impact that may have for you if you leave that employer, how much money you're leaving on the table, 
and what type of coverage you can get, how you can expand it, how you can effectively protect your family. So there's a lot that we need to cover and we need to talk about in the days and weeks to come, like I said. So we'll, we'll look at, I'll give you an overview and then we'll discuss the differences that play into all these different products available in the field of insurance. Now there are basic products and a very advanced product. Obviously we are not going to venture into very advanced product. That's not our goal. Our goal is to expand basic knowledge. So people know what's out there, what's possible and who to speak to when they want to explore these opportunities. Now, to my earlier point about life insurance, buying or purchasing life insurance coverage is not equivalent to signing a death warrant. It is simply not. Um, it's an act of caring for your loved ones, for people you're leaving behind. And for your information, for all of our information, the fact that you purchase life insurance does not just mean that um, you're calling out for death. In fact, a lot of life insurance, when we look at, we'll see that when we look at uh, whole life insurance and universal life insurance, they have a component called living benefits, meaning you can use your whole life insurance as an investment platform, building um, a cash value against which you can uh, borrow, uh, just like a bank product, you can borrow against that cash value, you can invest, you can loan it, or you can withdraw it, whilst you are alive. And there's no limitation to what you can do with that money. You can do anything and everything you want to do when it comes to how you want to utilize the living benefit within your whole life insurance or your universal life insurance. We will explore that a little later on, okay? But um, to begin, our conversation, I would like to very broadly for today's conversation, introduce four types of insurance, which are, which is going to be our bread and butter. We're going to spend days, weeks, and months of conversation around these four products, right? And at time, we're going just to talk about one type of product. At a time, we're going to talk about all of them. But today, I'm going to very high level, broadly introduce the four different type of insurance, life insurance, as uh, uh, um, um, uh, in, in which uh, we're going to be discussing in the days and months to come. The first one is what we call the term insurance. Term is T-E-R-M, basically uh, making a reference to the amount of time you're purchasing this coverage. It's an amount of time. It's a limited amount of time. It can vary between 10 years to 15 years to 20 years to 30 years. So I'm going to come back to that just in a minute. So term life insurance is the first one. And then we move on to what we call permanent life insurance. Now, within the permanent life insurance, we mainly have two types, right? Broadly, these are umbrella um, sort of titles, right? So within this umbrella title, we're going to see different under titles. We're going to explore that later on. But for today, I'm just introducing first term insurance, second permanent life insurance. And under permanent life insurance, the first one we're going to look at is what we call a whole life insurance. So term life, which is limited in time, and then we have a whole life insurance, meaning the entire life insurance, right? So by definition, the entire life insurance will reach maturity after 99 years, right? So for most people, they purchase life insurance when they're in their 30s, in their 20s, in their 40s, etc. So if you have a maturity at 99 years, right? Plus the age at which um, you purchase the insurance. So most people will be dead by the time this insurance reaches maturity. That's why it's called 
whole life. It covers you for the entire life. It's impossible, almost impossible to outlive it 99 years. If you are 30 years old, you purchase whole life insurance today and it reaches, uh, you know, uh, maturity at 100 years or 99 years as a matter of, as it were. Um, so it's 99 years plus 30 years. So you need to be a, over 130 years to outlive a whole life insurance. Okay. So it's a whole life. It's basically practically covers you the entire life that's your whole life one of the difference between a whole life and, and and um and term life is that the whole life includes living benefits so you can use it with a cash value you can build cash value inside your whole life and take it to wherever you want to take it right so cash value basically you can utilize it once you're still alive and we're going to come back to all that and then we have a universal life insurance, which is a variation of a whole life insurance. Universal life insurance is more flexible in that it gives you the ability to adjust some of the values, including the death benefits. You can adjust that, how much you want to pay in terms of your premium. You can adjust that because it is, it's, a, it's a variation of a whole life. It's also a whole life. It's a permanent life insurance. However, you have that facility to adjust certain things depending on the lifestyle, um, your financial situation and so on. You can adjust it over time. That's the difference, okay? And finally, today, we're going to look at what we call a final benefit. Final benefits, by definition, it's a whole life insurance product, um, but with just very smaller values and very, very, very affordable uh, premium to pay that everybody should be able to afford it. So we're going to come, go back to that and I'm going to share my screen so we explore in more details um, what every one of this product entails and then we're going to wrap up for today. So what is term insurance? It's the simplest, purest form of life insurance. Term life provides the death benefits that pays the beneficiary of the policyholder throughout a specified period of time. The death benefit is the amount of money that you get paid or your um, designated beneficiary will receive after you pass on. It is a very simple concept, right? So I am Andy, I'm alive, okay? And I decide, hey, I'm going to purchase a 30 year term life insurance for $500,000. Now I'm going to collect uh, quotations from different companies one company will say hey Andy you're in your 40s um for 500,000 to be paid in 30 years uh, or within any time within that 30 years really okay so if I'm in my 40s today um I'm you know maybe in, in about in, in, in within that 30 years period um if in the event of me passing during that time um my family will receive or my designated beneficiary will receive $500,000 provided I kept paying my premium over time. And it's very simple, right? Very simple. Program. And depending on your case of mobility, you know, how, how healthy you are, how young you are applying for that life insurance, your premium can be anything between $10 to $15 to $20 a month. If you think about it, um, it's really nothing, right? Because how much time do we spend ten dollars and twenty dollars, you know, within the day, within the week, for things that absolutely do not matter? And this is something a beautiful gift you can leave for your camp, your, your family, right? So, and think about it. If you pay twenty dollar, let's talk about twenty dollar a month. That's Okay, over 10 months, you've paid $200. Over 12 months, you pay $240. Over 10 years, you've paid $2,400. Over 20 years, you've paid 
$4,800, right? And so on and so forth. So your premium, it's very unlikely that they will catch up with the death value that you are going to be getting. So assuming my life come to an end in the next 20 years, the death benefit my children will receive will always exceed how much I've contributed. That's just like the most beautiful gift you're leaving behind for your family, right? If you own a mortgage at the time of your passing, they don't have to worry about that. That will be taken care of with that payout. If there's debt or anything, you know, obviously we teach our families and ourselves to leave, uh, you know, not to accumulate a big, large amount of debt, etc. But certainly, if you think about it, whether it's 250K, whether it's 100K, whether it's 300K, 500K, that will certainly help a great deal. That, you know, it doesn't matter if you were able to put on some, some big savings. I doubt many of us have savings accounts um, that's enough to uh, the match 500K or 100K, as a matter of fact, or even $50,000 in savings. It's very unlikely Like most people don't have that. So being able to set up something like that, even if it's just limited in time, it's a beautiful. Now, it's not just that. Once the term expires, let's say you are able to outlive the term. Let's say you contracted for 30 years or 20 years or 15 years or 10 years, then whatever the case might have been. Once you come to the end of that term, meaning the 10 years has elapsed, you're still healthy, you are strong, you have the opportunity now, provided there was a convertible rider in the contract, you can convert your term life into a whole life insurance, extend it further, um, convert it into longer life. There will be some adjustment, there will be adjustment to the premium and so on, but the biggest gift is, that you can give yourself is that your premium will not be the same as someone who's contracting new life insurance at that age when you are renewing yours, right? When you're converting your, your, your term to life insurance mm -hmm. because you were able to get in when you were younger, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years younger and healthier, right? So you are going to be grandfathered in that way compared to someone who is in their 40s or 50s and they're getting life insurance for the very first time. No matter the type of life insurance, they're just getting it for the very first time at that age, their premium is going to be higher because there is higher risk of mobility, higher risk of death as people age. And that's just a normal, natural process, okay? Right, the second type of life insurance we're going to explore today, very high level. We're not gonna go into a lot of details today, just very high level and then we're going to wrap it up is the whole life insurance. We talked about this earlier today, right? Whole life, it provides coverage throughout the life of the insured person. This covers you the entire life, right? So it's not limited in time. It's not like 10 years we have to review this stuff. This is just like, okay, I want a million dollars when I'm not here anymore. How much would it cost me today? I'm 25, I'm 30, if I need to leave behind a million dollars when I'm gone, right? So... Um, the insurance company is going to work out a premium that's going to allow you to pay, but different from the term life, they are going to add, you know, the possibility for you to build cash value, which is a small savings account inside your death benefit, death benefits, right? So you're going to have a small, amount, and that's a living benefit you can start building the cash value so if they say the premium is a hundred dollar for a million dollar when you, you you gone right and you can say okay i'm i have the ability to pay an extra two hundred dollar on top of the hundred dollar premium the hundred dollar premium is for the one million dollar death benefit when you're not here but if you can pay more making a bigger contribution than the premium the excess payment goes towards building the cash value inside your insurance product, okay? And now, as time goes by, that cash value increases, you are able to borrow against that cash value. You can get an advance payment, you can withdraw it, okay? 
and you can do all sort of things. Today, we're just going to say high level. I'm just presenting the concept. You're going to look into the tax um, issues around it a little bit later on, but today we're just introducing. So you have a different product than just the term life. This product now gives you the opportunity to do a little bit more. Now, if you build a cash value and you are no longer here, your time comes to go home and you uh, transition to um, the spiritual realm, right? Um, the, your beneficiary, your designated beneficiary, this could be your spouse, it could be your children, whoever you choose, your cat, your dog, your favorite charitable organization, you can seed that value, that benefit to whoever you choose to, uh, that, to receive that, right? And they were not just going to receive the death benefit, they're also going to receive the accumulated cash value within that death, within that insurance product. So two benefits within one, all right? However, these are, there are pros and cons to you know the whole life because it's not very flexible. It's a good, excellent product, but by the definition of it, it's not very flexible. You can do adjustment. Let's say you sign up for $300 a month and then 10 years down the line, you experience some financial difficulties. You want to adjust. You like you, Maybe you can have a second thought. Maybe I don't need a million dollars. I need maybe 500000 et cetera. How can I reduce my amount, uh, my contribution? You don't have that ability. You're going to have to terminate that contract, start a new one, because it, it's not an adjustable product, right? So you, when you decide to have one product, you're going to stick with it to the end, right? So that's why we have another type of product, which we call the universal life insurance, the UL, right? And universal, it's a, all of these concepts I'm presenting today are umbrella concepts, because within each categories, you're going to have subcategories. Right. Like today, I'm just presenting the universal of insurance, but you also have like the index universal of insurance. There's just a lot of them inside. But the universal life insurance is a permanent benefit, just like the whole life insurance with a slight difference. It is more flexible. You can do all sorts of adjustment, adjustment to how much death benefit you can receive at any point in time. So you can sign up for a million dollars today, 10 years down the line, you decide no. A million is too much. I want 750k. You can adjust that. Your premium will be adjusted. Um, you can decide, hey, five years down the line, like a million dollars too small. My family is now now I have three children. Uh, I need three million dollars if I'm gone. I need each one of them to receive one million benefits, etc. You can adjust the death benefit that to expand, to increase it or decrease it. You can adjust how much you want to pay every month. Uh or you want to pay more, you want to pay less, you can decide on all sorts of things. It's got a whole different variation that you can do. All right, so just remember that. And um, we're going to explore uh, the differences between uh, them uh, in the end. And today, we're going to end with this last product, which is the final benefit insurance. Final benefit insurance is simply uh, a whole life benefit, right? But that pays small death benefits, right? It's a whole life insurance that pays like smaller benefits and uh, very easy to get approved for, you know, um, very, very easy. Usually like, you know, it usually varies between $2,000 as a death benefit to $30,000, $35,000, right? So it's not a match. It's, it's, it's a very simple product and you can you know be approved for it very easily and because the, the the coverage is not big the premium is also very small you know you're talking about five dollar a month eight dollar a month ten twelve dollars a month it's very rarely will exceed twenty dollars a month very rarely however and in particular with our communities and again i'm very passionate for about our communities because a lot of the time we see things that are happening within our community, right? People die. It's a it's it's a it's a societal issue. It, 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 it's 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 part of life. We we celebrate people who are born, our children that are born, but we also go to funeral because so and so has passed on, and just like a fact of life, right? Um, it's not because you know uh, we wish people to die, but it's a fact. Now there's something that really um hurts my soul. Every time someone passes on, um, we have GoFundMe 
and I have nothing against. I've contributed to GoFundMe. Um, but what's something that strikes me every time is this GoFundMe, and they'll say the goal is 20K. $20,000. We need to raise $20,000 for to, to, to do this, to do that, to uh maybe send the body back home, or maybe just for funeral arrangement here, or maybe just for the uh the surviving members of this family, the person who has died, like the children, the wife, and etc., who are here, the education fund, etc. And we need 20k. And it gets circulated on uh, social media, etc. And it lands on your phone and you go in like, oh, I know so and so. Or maybe I don't know them. I'm just like, oh, but this is just a compelling story. I want to make a contribution, right? So you click on that link and you go on to GoFundMe. Mark my words, 99% 9, 9 of the time, the goal is 20K. By the time you reach that there, they've raised $1,200. They've raised $2,000. You'll be lucky to see they've raised $5,000 of the $20,000 goal. And it's been two months that this thing has been going on. I don't know if I've never, and I mean, I've seen dozens of GoFundMe. I have yet to see one that has reached the goal or exceeded it. And that breaks my soul. Because... We, we I can't blame uh people who are who, who have passed on. We you know we we live our lives and we have our challenges and our struggles and etc. But surely for five dollar a month, if I'm able to set up a 10k, 20k, 30k funeral cover coverage or final benefits uh coverage when I'm not here, your family they are free from that burden of trying to bury you. They don't have to worry about that. What's a more beautiful gift you can give to your family? They don't have to deal with that. They already It's already traumatic enough that you're gone. You're not going to be here tomorrow morning. You're gone. They're dealing with that. It's, it's a lot of trauma. But now they have to figure how do they have to fit the bull, the, to, to, to foot the, the bill. Um, maybe for medical expense, etc. And the beautiful final benefit expense, you can use it for anything. You can use it. it, it it's not like a million dollar coverage. It's a very basic coverage, like 30K. But think about when you have a corpse lying in a mortuary and funeral arrangement are running in in the, the you know in the, in the tens of thousand dollars, and you have a cash pay of 30K in that moment, what can it do? You cannot come back and fix it, but your family also don't have to bury, to carry the burden of making funeral arrangement. And that just takes a little boldness. It's actually a matter of faith. And within our community, it's a big issue because when we talk about death benefit, people talk about the spirit of death. Come on, guys. You drive your car around. Do you buy insurance? Do you purchase insurance for your vehicle? We pay hundreds of dollars for car insurance every month, right? Um, we pay that. Do we say, oh, we pay that um, and we're calling the spirit of accident to happen? A lot of us, we pay insurance. Right? Um, but if you don't have insurance and accident happen, you'll be sorry that you didn't have insurance. If you have insurance, it doesn't make it more pleasant, but at least you don't have to deal with the financial trauma. You may be physically uh, you know, uh, uh, affected, negatively affected by the accident, but I, I, you don't have to, to deal with the financial trauma of, oh my God, now I don't have a car, how do I fix the car and, and, and go back, uh, you know, uh, my, my, my daily commute. Or if it was your, pro, your, 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 your mistake and now someone else is involved, the car is damaged, the property is damaged, uh, it runs in the hundreds of thousands, you'll be glad you had insurance. It's no different with planning ahead, knowing that one day it will happen. It's an eventuality. It's going to happen to all of us. And But if you had the coverage, it will help you. Now, I'm going to end that. We're going to have this conversation and more coming in the days and uh, in the weeks coming with some experts in the field. We're going to talk to people from our communities. We're going to talk to people from 
all over the place, you know, um, um, expert people. We're just going to bring to you expert, not just um, any passerby. We, we want to talk to experts to educate us on these issues. And we're going to share that knowledge because we all deserve good coverage. We all deserve to leave a legacy behind. How do we protect our assets? If you're gone and you were having a mortgage and you're, you're not here, you are the, the main breadwinner, how would your children deal with that mortgage? Do they get to lose their house just because you're gone? Or will they be secure and protected because you had a policy that takes care of that? We're going to talk about probate issues. How do you circumvent that? How do you skip the probate so that your family doesn't have to deal to wait a year before they receive anything that you left behind. We're going to discuss all that, um, utilizing the information that we have available, right? As we, in this we're in this journey of creating wealth, it's important that we do that. So I'm going to bring you all that information. Subscribe to our channel, Empire Building Network. Subscribe, share this information. This is good info for our families, for our friends. This is good info for all of us to know about. We need to strengthen our communities. We need to develop this knowledge. We need to share a lot of things. Share, subscribe, talk about this. Until next time, this is your guy, Andy. God bless.